Hi, in this video I'll show you how to create a waffle chart. Now these are examples of a waffle chart and you can basically think of it as a pie chart but enclosed by a 10 by 10 square. So each square would represent 1% and these could be used on dashboards to indicate uh, 0 to 100% of something. So we have like item A, item B, item C, this one's 89%, 67%, 19%. So these are fairly easy to make and let's get into it. Now the first thing we want to do is create a 10 by 10 matrix and show the percentages in there. What I'm going to do is type in 1, 2, 3, whoops, put 1, 2, 3, and then I'll just use the fill hand, whoops, change this to a 2, you select everything, grab the fill handle down here and increase it to where it says 10. I'm going to do something similar here and go from 90 to 10. So let's select that and drag the fill handle down until it says 10. All right? That was a little bit too far, so I'm going to move this and move it down here. All right? And I'm going to take this and just copy it to the other cells. Select the fill handle, move it up, it copies everything up there. So as I said before, we want to have a matrix go from a 1 to 100. I think I said earlier 0, but really we want to go from 1 to 100 here. And the way we can do this is <clears throat> instead of just doing 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, I can just take this particular set of values, control C to copy, and select this range here and do a paste special. I'll go under home, paste special, and I'm going to add it. So this is going to add 10 to plus 1 is 11, plus 2 is 12. This one's going to add 20, plus 1 is 21, 22, etc. When I click OK, you now notice that everything is added nicely. So we have our 1s here, we've got our 10s here, 20s here, all the way up to 100. Now we're almost there, and what I mean by that is these are all integers. What we want to do is turn these into percentages. I'm going to type 100 up here, and I'm going to Control-C to copy that. I'll also do a Paste Special here, and select everything, and go under Paste, Special, and have this divided by. So it's going to divide everything by 100, and when that happens, you'll notice now that that becomes my percent, that becomes a percent, that's 3%. If I turn this whole cell into a, if I display it as percentage, you'll see that everything works out nicely to percentage. I can get rid of this now and just press delete. Now what I want to do is create a reference cell that would indicate the percentage that I arbitrarily want to put there, like 50% or 55%. And anything that is 50 or 50% 50 or below gets colored. I'll just put it up here for right now. 55, I'll put 55%. Press enter, and now I'm going to select my table here and apply some conditional formatting to this table. Under the Home tab, go to Conditional Formatting, select New Rule, and I want to select Format Only Cells that contain the cell value that is less than or equal to my reference cell. So my reference cell is A1 here. Right? And after that's selected, go to Format and select a nice color, maybe this orange, click OK click OK and now we have our cell values that are 55 and under. If I change this to 99% uh, then it becomes it selects everything that's 99% and highlights it orange. Let's make it a little bit something more lower here, 17%. Uh, now what we want to do is make this into a uniform square not have this kind of rectangular shape because we want to make it nice and tidy like a 10 by 10 matrix. To do that, I'm going to show you two ways that we can do that. The first way is to adjust the column and row uh, heights. If I select the row height here, and after I made the selection of these multiple rows, I can hover over one of them, one of the guidelines here, and right, right mouse click and you can see that it will let me adjust it, right? So right now it's at currently at 24 pixels. Let me move that back. 
it's at 24 pixels, 14.4, right? If I move it up, it's going to adjust it up, or it kind of move that one up a little bit. Let me control Z to undo that. So I'll keep it in with this 24 pixel and change the column to 24. Right now it's not. It's more than 24 pixels. So if I select that and I hover over it, you can see that it's 8.11 in the width and 80 pixels. Let's change that to 24 pixels. Let's move that down here to 24. All right, and now it's a perfect square when you think about it. But we have these hash marks there. And we really don't want to have these hash marks there because they don't look good. We can format this particular cell to make those hash marks disappear. There's a couple ways you can do that. You can turn these font colors white or make them disappear. We can say no fill. Oops. The font color, not the, not the shading. We can say um, a font color white and it basically makes it disappear but only for the ones that have a white background you can see that the orange background doesn't really work too well the other way to do it is to take the format of the cell and make the numbers disappear and if i right click and go under format cells i can create a custom number format let me create a custom format and in its place instead of having these hash marks show up i will have it disappear and the way to do that is just to put a bunch of uh, semicolons. You can see the first semicolon, it disappears. And I think all I need is three semicolons just in case I have any other numbers in there. And I actually have a, another video that talks about custom number formatting. And I'll just put that in a link below. But basically what it does, the first number before the semicolon indicates what kind of formatting we want to do for a positive number. The second uh, value before at the second after the first semicolon is what we would do for the negative number and the third semicolon is for uh, letters and the last semicolon the, th the third se three two one the third semicolon is for a zero I believe and the last one is for uh, letters or string I'm gonna click OK and once that's done you see that it's disappeared nothing's really gone because if I click on any of the cells you can see the numbers still there it's just that it's disappeared from display so I have my values here oh, one thing I probably wanted to do is have some grid lines here so before I do the number formatting control Z to undo let's do something which makes it look a little bit better now here I want to create a little bit of a border because we want to show a little bit of spacing between the areas that are colored I'm going to select my range of cells here, go under home, under my font grouping. I'm going to select more borders here and the color. Let's make that this light gray and click outline. So it outlines each of the cells there. Click OK. And you can hardly see it because I have my grid lines on. So let's turn off my grid lines. Go into view and unselect grid lines. And let's see if that worked. No, that didn't work. And I think it's because I needed to select, make a different selection. So let's select this again, go under home, under the font here. Let's see if I click all borders. Let's see if that took care of it. Yep, that took care of it. So now I have a little bit of gray here and I don't want these hash marks there. So that can be erased with conditional formatting. You might think that if I select this and go under the font color and select maybe a white font that would take care of it but it doesn't take care of it for the orange colored cells the way to get around that is to change the number formatting so I selected this range of cells right click go under format cells and let's move this over here and I want to create a custom number format and the one I want to do is let me remove, delete that what I want to do is just put a bunch of semicolons so you would notice here that there's a bunch of other custom number formats and they're separated. This the delimiter is a semicolon. The first number before the semicolon indicates how you want to display the number if it's a positive number. The second one is how to display it if it's a negative number. You can see red here indicates a negative number. The thir a third number would be a third value after the second semicolon would be zero. Uh, zero, how do you want to display zeros? And the last number would be uh, strings. So let me put my semicolon here. You notice that once I do, do that, uh, it disappears because these are all go always going to be positive numbers. So in essence, all I, really do, all I really need is one semicolon because it's telling us don't have anything uh, for that. So if I click OK, 
you notice it's all gone right now. So once that's done, all I need to do now is just add the text to indicate uh, 17, because really you don't want people to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, and then go to 17. You want to have an additional marker to indicate that. You can do that by just inserting a text box. So I go to Insert, select Text Box, and just kind of draw it out here. And this is going to reference that cell. So I'll type equal in the formula bar and just click on that cell. So it's going to reference A1. Press enter. And now you notice that it's selected that. Let's center this a little bit and make it a little bit bigger. I'll center it here. Maybe center that part and make this a little bit bigger so it's a little bit more apparent. Let me move the text box here so it becomes a little bit better to view. And also, I don't need that that border around the text box. You can see it's there. Let's get rid of that border and also any fill. So let's get rid of the border. Let's not have a border there. We're going to the Format Drawing Tools and the Shape Fill. I don't want any fill. Right now, it's a, right now it's a white color fill. And then get rid of the outline. So no outline, right? So if I click outside, you see that the outline and the fill is gone. So let's move this over here. So that's one way that we can make this uh, box here. So if I select the cell and type in another number and let's say 35%, now you notice that it's changed that. So as I mentioned before, th there's another way that you can also do this. If I didn't want to mess with changing the widths here, so let me select these cells here and maybe make it back into the uh, different, I think it was 80 pixels that it originally was, right? So if we had it like this and we didn't really didn't want to change it too much, the other way that we could do it is take a picture of this, a live picture of this, and change that. And the way I do that is I would select my cells here and control C to copy or just click on copy and then select outside anywhere and paste. And what I'm going to do is paste a picture link, linked picture. And you notice now it's kind of selected it. Let's move this over here a little bit closer down here. And this, this picture link is a dynamic picture of this. If I change this to like 11, you notice that both of them changed. This is a, actually a picture. Now, I didn't want to mess with this in terms of the width, but I can take this and change the size. So you can notice it's a picture. The picture tool shows up. I can change the size. Let me click on Format. And let's just make this a perfect square. If I select maybe a 2x2 two two square, whoops, select here, type 2, and then select here, type 2, it should turn it into a perfect square. If it doesn't, I'll say I know why. Let's see, that doesn't seem right. So let me click on the uh, expand this dialog box and see what happened. So what happened was we had this lock aspect ratio on. Uncheck that and make this 2 again. See, see when that was on, it changed it to 0.6. It's locking the aspect ratio of a rectangle here. So with that unchecked, now I can type 2. And then this is 2, and it turned into a perfect square. So I'll click Close, and this I can move over here. So this becomes my perfect square. I didn't really need to worry about messing with the column widths or the row heights here. You can see if I change my value here, make that 17, both of these change. So some things I do notice about the when you create this picture link is there's some things times sometimes things are a little bit off. And you can see here that it didn't pick up the line edge here. So maybe I need to select something a little bit more outside of it. I'll delete that and select this area. Control C to copy. So click something out here and then go to paste link and then do the same thing here where I changed it. Uh, remove lock aspect ratio, change that to two, change that to two, press enter. Let me close this. Let's see if it picked it up. Yeah, it did pick it up. So it picked it up and it picked up this extra space here, but that's okay. Since we'll, the one that's visible is just showing up here. So I have my 17%. If I didn't want to show how show have that show up, I can just move this over to here, right? And then just make that a little bit smaller and have it show up here. And you notice that it's it looks like it's in the back. Let me move that to the to the back. Select this particular and right click and go to send to back. So it sends it to the back. So this appears in the front 
layer. So that's the other way to create the square matrix here for our waffle chart. So there's two ways we can do it after we do the conditional formatting. You can either change the size of the column or the rows, or you can just do a picture of the particular range of cells there to create our little waffle chart. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.